Item 12, discussion of possible action item. Discussion of possible action regarding approval of financing for Public Works, Parks and Recreation, and Friendswood Volunteer Fire Department, Capital Equipment, and authorize the Mayor to execute the financing documents. Second. Motion and a second. Rod. Just a brief uh, background, Council. You all have budgeted for the purchase of an ambulance for the Volunteer Fire Department, um, a side steer loader, street sweeper, and vacuum, and a vacuum jet combination sewer truck for Public Works as well as a dump truck for our Parks and Rec Department. Um, staff is proposing a financing the purchase of these equipment over the next five years at an interest rate of 2.08%. Um, so it, it doesn't impact the budget as much and allows for the acquisition of these in a more cost-effective manner. Questions? All in favor? Great. Okay. Yeah. Item 13, resolutions, we've done resolution A. Resolution B is 2019-28, resolution of the City of Friendswood, Texas, hereby desig designating Sally Branson as representative and Mike Foreman as alternate to the Houston Galveston Area Council 2020 General Assembly and Board of Directors. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Item C, Resolution 2019-29, a resolution of the City of Friendswood, Texas, Galveston, Harris Counties, submitting a nomination to the Board of Directors of the Galveston Central Appraisal District for 2021, 2020, and 2021. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Quick discussion. Uh, we're going to submit uh, Scott Brast's name. Uh, I think we might as well, because we can, we can submit all five names, right, Melinda? Mm -hmm. So we just add Scott instead of Trish, just go around, include all five names and send our letter in. So if everybody's okay with that, all in favor? Great. Item D, resolution 2019-30, a resolution of the City of Friendswood, Texas, Galveston, Harris Counties, submitting a nomination to the Board of Directors of the Harris County Appraisal District for 2020 and 2021. Motion. I'll second. Motion and a second. And in this case, uh, we're submitting Mike, Mike Sullivan's name, and in this case, we only have to submit the one name. Correct. So, all in favor? Item uh, E, Resolution 2019-31, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Friendswood, approving the public funds management and investment policy. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to second. Uh, any discussion? We could get Katina up here. Any questions? Everybody good with this? Okay, all in favor? Thanks for being willing, Katina. Resolution F, 2019-32, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Friendswood, Texas, approving financing terms for capital lease purchase agreement. Refers back to the item that we just voted on in 12. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? I'd just like to discuss something real quick here. Um, I know that... Uh, We've agreed to the mayor to execute the financial documents. I just want to make sure that before we spend any of this money that we get all the uh, possible bids that we can get to ensure that we're getting the very best price. Yes, sir. Uh, we will, and we, we can bring that item back to council for a final vote on okay. the individual acquisition of the Very bond. good. That's just what I want to make sure of. You hear that, Derek? <laughs> ACU, you guys. Okay. Okay. Uh, all those in favor. Ordinances, item 14, ordinance number T, 2019-37, first reading of an ordinance amending the zoning classification for a tractor parcel containing 156.4717 acres located along the future Friendswood Lakes Boulevard between West Ranch and Friendswood Lakes subdivisions, Friendswood, Galveston County, Texas, to change from single family residential and planned unit development PUD 2019-11 to a revised plan unit development for a residential development, Avalon at Friendswood. I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. A motion and a second. Discussion? Would it do any good to remind everybody about the ordinance of the minimum lot size up here? I mean, we keep approving this is the second development that we've approved with a lot size that is nowhere near the requirement that our ordinance states. 
The PUD is a way to get around the ordinance. Everybody knows that. Every time there's a development and there's a <clears throat> screenshot put up, everybody talks about, well, if we had 90-foot lots, we wouldn't have 259 uh, lots. We'd have 400. So if you can explain to me how if you take the same green space and the same developable land space and you increase the lot size, you get more houses, it's just a facade. It's all, it's all smoke and mirrors. I so they cut that's... out the green space, and then they make you feel concerned that, oh, yeah, well, if I was going to do it, and look, I get it, right? I own a business, so I understand, right? If you can develop less land and get more houses on less land and meet, leave the rest as green space, you make more money. I get it. Makes sense. I'm in business. If I was a home developer, that's what I would do. I would try to do that all over the place. But this governing body, many, many years ago, decided that they wanted an ordinance requiring a minimum lot size. And this will be the second time in my tenure up here, which has been eight and a half years, that we will have approved a development that doesn't have the lot size requirement. So I'm only saying this because I, I went way long and way overboard on the last time when the guys first presented it, uh, you know, with everything from, you know, creating a product that was affordable to kids getting out of college that starts at $400,000, which I thought that was a little bit of a reach. I think I know everybody up here knows my position. My position is, is that we have a minimum lot size ordinance, and I think that we should stick to that. And, and so that's my, I hope that I could persuade some of you to agree with that, um, but that, that's all I can hope for. The uh, first one that he mentioned, the first development that they changed the, uh, the uh, zoning ordinance and approved the PUD was out here, and they had the same concerns that this young lady did from West Ranch, and they said, are you going to flood me? And they said, oh, no, we're not going to flood you. So... If you go out there to that new development, they built a berm wall right up against the property that had been there since the 70s, a berm wall, and tried to drain it from the berm wall to the road. Now, the people who are in that new development are three feet higher than the people that were there in the existing development. Please go out there and look at, look at what they did out there at Sun Meadow to those people that are butted up to that new development that was going to be less dense than anybody else's. And those houses have had trouble, haven't they, Mo? We've had some flooding issues. We've had some mitigation issues. And now we're being asked to do it again. And we've got people out there at West Ranch that are concerned about what are you going to do to keep my existing property that is going to be abutted up to this Avalon property and it's going to, of course, have to drain into this ditch. Well, where's that other part going to go? Has PNZ looked into that? Has our drainage district and the Galveston County Consolidated Drainage District looked into that? Well, I know it's going to come before GCCD, and I'll be there. But I'm just saying, we cannot have someone say, oh, we're going to build a berm wall against these seven or nine houses back here that abut up to us, and then those people's backyard, they're looking at a wall in their backyard. It's horrible. And this body did it. Not when I was on here. Not, not when I was here, but this body approved it. And I am just totally against anybody doing that again. So that's my, my opinion on it. You can do 90-foot lots like everybody else is. But I'm telling you, West Ranch people vote, don't they? Okay. Well, they vote. Is West Ranch all 90 by 130? It is, it is not. It's a, it's a so. PUD uh, yeah. ranging from 60-foot lots up to 90-foot uh, lots. It's a 1,500-home development. Correct. Um, so to be clear, I wasn't on city council when that got approved. This is the third, not the second. Correct. And I said when I was on council. Yeah. Oh. Historically, uh, the property the, that's for consideration this evening would drain towards West Ranch naturally. And when West Ranch developed, they elevated the property to comply with their floodplain as well as to drain their property through their uh, series of detention ponds. Uh, as such, they've had to provide a backside slope swell between West Ranch and the Brakeville Tract. And this property, in essence, will do the same thing in that that swell in between would drain 
the properties in between. So it should improve drainage, but obviously if there's a particular issue, I've already asked even to engage the young lady that spoke earlier tonight to have our folks go out there and see if there's something that uh, is unique to that property that we need to get involved with. And just to clarify, I think Robert was talking about the Friendswood Trails and Sun Meadows. And I've made the comment before that it seems like, you know, 100% of the time all the engineer drawings come back and the drainage is approved. And it seems like 90% of the time the drainage is wrong. Because I know in the Forest of Friendswood we had people get flooded running from their backyard out to the street from property that was developed behind them. So that's all. Anybody else? Give it to Mo. Give it to Mo. Steve. <clears throat> well, let me uh, let me answer some of the comments here. Um, when uh, when the ninety foot rule was put in, the same people put in the uh, ability for us to write puds, and we have let's use West Ranch. There was a pud for that. We have fifteen hundred people living in Friendswood enjoying living in Friendswood because they did the putt for that and they allowed that development to go in. And, and I drive around West Ranch, I think it's spectacular, absolutely spectacular. And, and as far as Sun Meadow, uh, you know, that subdivision used to flood in a Sunday afternoon storm and we'd have houses flooded. We had Harvey and almost no one flooded out there. And that was after the developer had started the drainage work that was a, a agreed to by a PUD here. There was other work that went on too. Uh, so, so it wasn't just that. So um, to, just, um, to, to just try to demonize PUDs is wrong. It's wrong. They are, a, a, they are an, a, a, an ordinance that we're allowed to use, and we're allowed to use our intelligence to look at these developments and see what is the best for Friendswood. It's not a workaround. It's not a, uh, a requirement that if we approve something for one, we have to approve it for the next. We can look at each one of them individually, and that's what they allow. So I'm going to vote for this. Uh, I do want to say, though, I was not joking. Do not bring this back to us again. Do not bring this back to us. You know, it's, 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 it's too difficult for us to do this every single time you guys want to make a change. Get it done. Anybody else? Okay, we got a motion and a second. All in favor? Opposed? Four to three. Okay, item 14, ordinance number seven, or T 2019-38, first and final reading of an ordinance adopting the City of Friendswood, Texas general budget for the fiscal year 2019-2020, and I have the motion script, so bear with me. I move that the proposed budget for fiscal year 2019-2020 be adopted as presented including revenue projections of $79,481,563 and expenditure appropriations totaling $79,285,643. And I get a second. Motion and a second. For, for council's benefit uh, to sort of explain the legal uh, jargon the mayor just read, uh, staff is recommending um, the proposed budget is presented to you over the previous meetings. You'll have a tax rate to discuss at the following uh, agenda item, uh, item C. Um, but we're proposing to adopt the budget and lower the tax rate by over a penny uh, from the current uh, tax rate. Um, it includes everything within the base budget, plus all the forces at work and decision packages as previously presented to council. Okay, motion a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Okay, item 14B.1. Again, I have the, the language for the motion. Hang in there, Robert. I move that we ratify the property tax revenue reflected in the budget for fiscal year 2019-2020 as required by local government code section 102.007C. I'll make the motion. That was, that was the motion. Oh. I'll make the second then. You make the second, okay. <laughs> when I say I move. <laughs> Sorry. I think I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> I know Robert's not. Okay. Um, so, 
Motion is second. Any uh, further edification on that, Mo? No, no. This is some legal jargon that I'm not quite. No, isn't B one where we actually discuss the rate? So B one, you're I you're adopting see. the revenue that we need for the rate, and oh, I apologize for the confusing nature of this. State law is very explicit in how these action items take place, but item C is where we talk about okay. the rate itself. So, motion is second. All in favor? Opposed. Okay, 14C, ordinance number T, 2019-39, first and final reading of an ordinance providing for the levy and collection of ad valorem taxes of the city of Friendswood, Texas, for the tax year commencing October 1st, 2019, and ending September 30th, 2020. And bear with me, I move, I make the motion that the city of Friendswood property tax rate be increased by the adoption of a tax rate of 52.1439 cents, which is effectively a 5.3% increase in tax rate. This tax rate is 2.1% less than the current last year's tax rate. Second. Motion and a second. Now, you want to discuss? Go down that way. Anybody want to discuss? Discuss? Thank you. Thank you for yes. finding that. Thank you for finding that penny. Yes. Okay, I'll discuss it. Oh, you got a whole book. Yeah, I got the book. This right here is a wonderful book that Katina and the staff put out. It's the annual proposed budget for 2019 and 2020. It is a awesome, transparent, best estimates of what we think revenue expenditures are going to be. And it's from a very educated historical background. They pretty much know, and then when we get our certified tax dollars uh, that we know that we're going to get certified from Harris County and then we plug those in. But more importantly, Mo and them, they send out one of these it's a monthly operations report. And it's even better than the estimates because what it does is it gives us up to date, year to date numbers. And I kind of just wanted to walk through them because the property taxes and the revenue collected from them, virtually 99% is perfect. Sales tax and alcohol taxes were about 1.3 million off, but that lags because we're not going to get those for 60 to 90 days, so we're probably pretty good there. Our franchise taxes, 88% in, and that also lags the year. So that looks pretty good. But one of the things that I noticed, and the reason why I'm going to support your tax uh, the way you have it, the one penny less than the, than the uh, 53, but more than the effective, because I looked at the permits and fees. We've only collected 1,354,000 and we thought we were going to collect 1,934,000. That's $588,000. So that's telling me something. That's telling me that development is slowing in Friendswood. I thought, man, where else would I might see that? So I'll go back here to sewer and I'll look into uh, the sale of water meters. We had budgeted. 35,000, we've only collected 25,000, almost 10,000 less. That's 26% uh, off of what we've collected in years past. And I did notice that you changed it in the summary from 35,000 to 30. So I, I know that y'all are on this, but when I look at water revenue, when we started to look at you know raising rates on re revenue, we're $2 million short on revenue. So. I could probably justify the 53 cents. I'm really glad that you decided to knock off a, a, a more than a penny, but I know I can't justify going to the effective tax rate. So I'm going to support you on the 52. I think you've done a great job. I think you all have, and I really do appreciate this monthly. If anything, in corporate America, board meetings around the country, they meet monthly to go over the operations of their corporations. And they give their input on, and they know what's going on. I would recommend that we go in executive session and go over these monthly reports. I'm looking forward to the October, which will show us this, will show us September at the end of this. And if not monthly, Mary Kay, you shake your head no, but if not monthly, maybe quarterly. I don't know. Excuse me, uh, but we can't discuss this in executive session. This would session. have to be well, open. Well, it, it, it's Welcome too to bad in corporate America we don't have to do it out in public, but we can know what's going on in the city, and this monthly report is really good, 
And I really appreciate it because it really gives you up to date on what is real time going on in the operations of our business. I mean, our city, uh, our incorporated municipality. So I would suggest that you can workshop it once a quarter. Yeah. And well, we probably should. And we can, and, and you're welcome, Councilmember Griffon, to visit with me weekly or monthly if you'd like to go over that. Um, and there are a couple of things I do want to go over in this yes, book sir. with you. Because I did go through department by department, because last year, I mean, last uh, month you charged me to find 1.2 million. I did. You want me to go over it with you right now? It might scare the entire city, but I can, I can do it with you. Anybody else? I'll vote against it, but I want to thank Katina, Finance Department, Murad, for all that you guys do for the city. Uh, I made the comment um, when we were talking, when we were talking about the bond election stuff, that it, isn't it remarkable that in a city like this, you actually get chewed out because you don't spend enough money. With all of the out of control government spending across the country, both local, federal, state, it's just out of control, uh, this city staff, um, this team that represent you day in and day out do a tremendous job of guarding your money. And so I don't take my no vote as a, as a slap in the face. I'm, I'm very appreciative of the things that you do. Brent, you got anything? Anybody else? Okay, we've got a motion and a second. I should add that uh, Maybe I was supposed to read this. The proposed tax rate is composed of a maintenance and operation rate of 43.216 cents and a debt service rate of 8.9279 cents. So our, uh, we could be very proud also of the fraction of our tax rate that is debt service is very low in this town. So uh, if you want to compare us, compare us to Pearland or somebody else that has a crazy debt load. So, okay, that's all I'm going to say. All in favor? Opposed? All right. 14.D ordinance number T2019-40, first and final reading of an ordinance adopting budget amendment 12 to the original general budget of the city for fiscal year 2018-2019 to provide for supplemental appropriation and or transfer of certain funds. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Item 15, commun communication from mayor and council members. Any volunteers to kick us off? Steve. Uh, two things. One, uh, this past Saturday we had the very first uh, library gala. Right. Uh, and several people up here went, and uh, it was fabulous, absolutely fabulous. Um, uh, it, uh, it was a wonderful event, really well done, and our library looks spectacular. Uh, for this event, uh, and uh, I haven't seen the final numbers, but um, but it appears we actually made money, uh, and so uh, people and people were very generous on the uh, on the silent auction, and uh, uh, including our former mayor uh, uh, Holland won the uh, bidding for mayor mayor of the day, mayor for the day. So <laughs> I think he wants to bring his grandson up to do it, but nonetheless, he did win it. Uh, but anyway, it was a really great event for the first time out of the box. We were really, really happy about it. And second of all, if any of you want to participate in Histerween, I got spots. Uh, just let me know. It's uh, it's uh, October Saturday, October 26th. Sally. I want to thank um, PD, Fire, and EMS for our national night out. Um, our little neighborhood is only 11 homes, and we got the full treatment and it was great, and we really appreciate that. I also uh, really enjoyed the Fire EMS Expo that was held out at Centennial this weekend. That was really a big hit, too. My grandsons especially enjoyed that. And um, a special shout-out to Parks and Rec. I want to thank you all for the ribbon-cutting today for our canoe launch at 1776 Park. That was pretty exciting, and we had a really big group there. So I just want to say thank you. That was the city and the drainage district and Rotary combining on an effort, uh, so joint effort. And I really hope we see more and more projects like that. That was just terrific. So thank everybody who was involved. Also had fun at the National Night visiting a couple of neighborhoods and uh, attended a Keep Friends with Beautiful subcommittee meeting this uh, last month. Those people are on it. They have so many good, great projects and really appreciate them and all the volunteers in our city. 
Yeah, I'll add my thanks, Chief Wieners, for participating with all the troops out there for National Night Out, and Greg Otto from Fire Department. You guys did spectacularly out there, and it was it was a lot of fun running around town. Uh, I know Chief uh, took Brent, uh, Council Member Aaron weren't with him. I guess uh, that's adult supervision maybe uh, for, <laughs> for, 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 our, for our new Council Member. First, first time out, you know, it's, it's great that you were uh, driving Mr. Aaron Ward around to various neighborhoods, but uh, it was a lot of fun to be out there and uh, see all the people uh, cooking hot dogs. And It's a great night in Friendswood. Just uh, be very careful with, uh, you know, fire on that evening because, you know, these fire trucks are out partying at all the different neighborhoods. You know, you don't want to have to have a fire call. You guys already probably have to bulldoze a couple of cars to get out of those neighborhoods because everybody comes and parks and blocks the fire trucks in. But it was fun. Robert? Um, just wanted to mention that the Anson Jones Masonic Lodge uh, at 110 East Willowick Avenue is going to be having an open house on October the 19th from about 11 to 4. And if you'd like to come out and visit and check out the different stations and stuff in our lodge, if you've never been in one, come on out. We've at, we'll be having an open house and an explanation of what goes on at our fraternity. Thank you. Brent? Uh, I just wanted to thank uh, Chief again for showing me the ropes last week. We went to um, over to Wedgwood and Forest Bend, and that was all the time we had. We spent almost two hours at those two places, and we had 150 people at that Wedgwood one. It was a lot of people. A lot of people at that one. We had a we had a good time. Met a lot of a lot of great people. And the other thing, if anybody hadn't seen the dog park yet, I finally got a chance to go over there this week, and that's a Pretty neat addition to our city that I think is only going to continue to get better. There's some other things, as we spoke about earlier, we're going to be adding. So if you hadn't checked that out, try to, to get over there. It's a neat addition. Thanks. You let you drive his car? No, I asked him to. He didn't let me drive. <laughs> I, asked, I asked him if we were going to go through a zombie apocalypse whenever I got in the car with all the, Smart man. With the rounds we had. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Well, Mayor, I would make the most of it. Okay. All in favor? Adjourned. <laughs>